Okay, so uh, we have two objects that are connected together. Um, we have something like a table. We have object A sitting on the table, and it's connected with a, by a string to object B. The string passes over a pulley. I have that drawn in red. Um, and let's understand that the pulley has no friction, so that's not an issue. So the question says that object B has a mass of 12 kilograms, pulls object A, mass of 18 kilograms, across the table. If 50 newtons of friction retards the motion of the system, what is the acceleration of the system? Now I want to point out something that's kind of interesting here. We have object B, which is only 12 kilograms, pulling on something which is heavier, 18 kilograms. That's kind of cool. Okay, this is going to move. Um, we do have friction retarding the motion of object A. Um, we haven't explored friction in detail yet, but it's enough to say we have that number of 50. So the first thing that you need to do to analyze the problem is draw a free body diagram. So let's take object A. Object A has four forces acting on it. Of course, it has the force of gravity. And since we have multiple objects, I'm going to have to call that Fg, but F little g, sub g, A. And uh, there's a normal force acting on A. And uh, we said that we're tugging this. The picture shows that it, we're tugging this to the right with a... Uh, string, so that's tension force. I'm going to call that T for tension. And we have force of friction kind of making the motion difficult. Uh, so the force of friction acting on A is to the left. Um, now we need to decide on direction here. And as a general rule, what I do is I always make the direction of motion the positive direction. So since A is moving to the right, I'm going to call to the right positive. And that's what I recommend you do. Upward, generally make up positive. Object A is moving up or down, so that doesn't really matter in this case. Now let's look at object uh, B. Object B. Uh, we have two forces acting on it. Gravity is pulling it down. And uh, we have tension of the string pulling it up. It's the same string. Now, A and B are connected by a string. So we consider that a system. Um, so... In a system, um, we know that uh, uh, A is moving to the right and B is moving down. If they're moving in the same direction, we have to make sure that our direction of B makes sense. B is moving down in the positive direction. Um, A is moving to the right in the positive direction. They move as a single unit. So since they're moving at a sing as, a, um, as a single unit, we know that acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of B. And that's because it's a system. And that means that they move, they move as a unit. So I want to emphasize that idea. And that's why we designated down here as the positive direction. Okay, the system is moving in the positive direction. Okay, so we have our free body diagrams done. We uh, made the point here that uh, the acceleration of both objects are the same, whatever that is. And that happens to be the question. So let's write um, the statement, Newton's law statement for each object. So we have the sum of the forces acting on A 
in the x direction is equal to the mass A times the acceleration. And I'm just going to call that A for acceleration because it's the same for the system. So in the x direction we have tension pulling the object to the right. We have friction retarding the motion. And um, that's equal to m a. And we can plug in some numbers. I don't know the tension, but I do know we have 50 newtons of friction. And the mass of A is 18.0. And that's the best I can do. So that equation describes the motion of block A in the x direction. Now, since block A doesn't move in the y direction, there's no point of writing any statement there. At least not for now. So the next thing I want to do is write a, a statement for um, object B. Same idea. We have B, and uh, that's equal to MBA. I guess we're going to look in the y direction, so FBY. And uh, we have two forces acting uh, on B in the Y direction. In the positive direction, we have FG B minus tension. See, the tension is preventing gravity from moving object B at 9.8 meters per second squared. So object B isn't going at 9.8. It's trying to. Gravity's pulling on it, but the string is retarding the motion of B because it's connected to object A. So we know that FG, the weight of the object, is MBG minus T is equal to MBA. And, and uh, if we plug in the numbers, 12G that's no good. Erase that. Uh, 12 times 9.8 minus T. It's still eraser. Ah, uh, still eraser, thank you. Uh, 12 times 9.8 minus T is equal to 12A. 12 times 9.8, 118 minus t is equal to 12a. I, I'm sticking to sig figs here, even though I haven't been writing them down, but I'm, I'm maintaining the sig figs of 18 and the sig figs of 12, and I'm actually using 9.81. Okay, so you can check the sig figs as you calculate this yourself. Okay, so now that I have those uh, equations. I want to show you a, a different way of combining those two equations. Um, we could set the two equations equal to t and combine them that way, but we can also add the equations. So that's a different technique. I know you've done this in math, so let's apply it here. So add the equations. And the way you add the equations is you just like you add numbers. You take numbers and you stack them, put a line and you add them up. In arithmetic. So we're going to take the two equations, t minus 50.0 is equal to 18.0a, and stack the other one, on uh, or stack that one on top. So we'll put a nice plus sign there, put a line, and we're going to add them up. So when you add up the uh, numbers on the left side of the equation, 50 minus 50 plus negative 18, you're going to get 68. And what's t minus t? Just 0. So I'll put that in, plus 0, is equal to 18 plus 12. That's 30, a. So a will be equal to 68 divided by 30 or A is equal to 
2.37 meters per second squared. And that's our answer. <coughs>